Hi guys, so if you follow me on Twitter and or Goodreads, you probably know that I just recently finished Ice Like Fire by Sarah Rash, the second book um, to Snow Like Ashes. So it came out like two years ago. This came out last year. The sequel I think comes out this year or is it already out? I don't know and also I kind of don't care because I hated this book so much. I thought it was absolutely horrible and I needed like an outlet for that. So that's why I'm filming this video. First of all, disclaimer, I liked the first book when I read it for the first time and I read it for the second time just a few weeks ago, not so much anymore. But anyway, I liked the first book. Second of all, this is just my opinion. If you disagree with it, good for you. I'm happy you enjoyed this book, really, because not enjoying it was not fun. I tried to like it so much, I just didn't. So here is why. while I was reading the first book but the fact that they have like four king names named after the four seasons that then also have capitals named after months in those seasons I'm like please come up with something a little bit more creative <laughs> but maybe I should back up a little basically this book is about the events after uh, Angra was sort of defeated in the first book um, not really, obviously, Mera, Mera, why am I pronouncing her name like she's Japanese? Mera, um, obviously, uh, is still worried that he is still alive because they broke his conduit and he just disappeared. So he's like, oh, he's still there somewhere. But nobody wants to believe that. Everybody else is like, no, definitely dead. Because that is always that easy to kill bad guys. And yeah, basically, she's finally back in winter. She has her kingdom back, but she's still struggling with... Uh, being too reliant on Cordell and kind of worried that Noah might take over her kingdom and then they have to go looking for the magic chasm or chasm I don't know I'm gonna call it chasm because it sounds better and uh, basically she's like I don't know if we should even look for it because I don't want it and then you know things happen and basically pretty early on in the book they end up finally finding the chasm and uh, it has like symbols on it and they're like let's go into the out into the world to find them because <laughs> that's literally the only clue they have is like those symbols and they're like definitely know where to find it because that's a symbol for this kingdom so the key there's like a key to a door and the key is definitely gonna be in that specific kingdom so let's just go there and look for it and that in it's like this entire premise of this book is so ridiculous like that is all they have to go on for the entire quest it's like we know with the key there's three keys they're gonna be in those three kingdoms let's go look for them <sighs> like that's all they have to go on it is absolutely mind-blowing <laughs> I don't understand like that's definitely a good reason to just like depart to that kingdom and be like let's just look for it because maybe maybe we'll find it like lying in the street randomly <sighs> and then they kind of also do but that's a different story what I was gonna talk about is this entire journey in itself like literally she is the queen of winter and she just got her kingdom back and is really worried that it might be taken over by somebody else but instead she decides to go on this journey that could be done by anybody else just as easily. She could just send one of her a billion of side characters that don't really have any purpose other than worshipping her anyway and let them search for the freaking keys because it's like a kind of what's that a shot in the dark anyway like there's so little basis for them to go on their quest but then they she still is like yeah let me do that by myself because that's definitely what queens should be doing traveling the world and leaving her kingdom behind and then that definitely doesn't end in a bad way at all hint hint oh my god <laughs> i can't even with her i can't with meta and again i said her name japanese why she's not japanese I can't with Mera. She is so annoying. Like her, I thought I liked her character in book one, but in book two, I was just like, let me just slowly murder you, please, because you're so annoying. Oh, so the thing that annoys me the most about her is her relationship with Theron because throughout the book, he keeps betraying her. Like he knows what she wants. He knows what like she believes in, she knows that he knows that she trusts him, and he just does the complete opposite. Like not just once, not just twice, but literally all the fucking time. And she's like mad for maybe a second and then she's like, oh but 
the way he looks at me. I just have feelings. I get all of the feelings, so obviously I can't be mad at him anymore. Oh my god. Girl, I thought you were like independent and a feminist. I was so into her in Bhagwan because she like was not one of those dumb heroines that put the safety of her kingdom like to the side and was like no i'm just gonna pursue this guy that i like but she was actually concentrating on the important things and in this one she was not she was like i don't know i have hormones and feelings and i'm a 16 year old and should not be given crown for a kingdom anyway but whatever i have it now so yay party let me just fall in love with this dude and then just give him things that i want like uh, when she finds one key and just hands it to him like i definitely don't want you to have it but here you go that's not what happens but basically it feels like it like eesh, why are you so stupid <laughs> and then obviously without spoiling the ending obviously she happened and like all her decisions she made turn out to be bad ones the thing is, I knew, like, while she was making them, that they were bad ones, because they were so horrible and so stupid. And I was like, oh my god, why? this is not gonna end well. And it didn't. But, you know, I told you so. Another thing that I was gonna say before, but then I kind of forgot about this whole journey, like, they travel from kingdom to kingdom, and then, like, not every kingdom, but like sometimes the king, like once the king of that kingdom is just like, yeah, let me just come with you. Because that's something that should happen twice in a story where a king or a queen just randomly abandons their kingdom. And again, it doesn't end well. And I'm like, I, what, why are you doing this? It's a random group of people. Okay, there's a queen in there, right? But there's a group of people that are just traveling from kingdom to kingdom. And you're just like, I guess the guy who did this wasn't like the smartest ruler and we knew that like he's not he's not a good ruler per se but still to just be like yeah let me just come with you because that's something i can do and like my kingdom is just gonna run itself or whatever like how another thing i want to touch on are all the ridiculous side characters that have no particular reason for being there except as i mentioned earlier to worship mira like that's all they kind of do like her entire posse of people that just follow her around like tame puppies i don't understand the reason for their existence really uh i thought that they were like not one-dimensional like I don't know, for some reason when I read book one the first time I was like, I reread re my review and I saw that I apparently thought that the side characters were not one dimensional, that they had actual purpose and I liked them because they fulfilled a role and had like their own backstories and stuff like that and I think that that is true to a certain extent in book one but then a lot of them are just like names in book two or even also in book one like i don't know a lot of them are just names that are there and you don't really know like i feel like there's too many of them to even like remember who this person was like a lot of times i'm like okay there's this guy called i think hollis i'm like wait is he was he from the original group or how did he how does he fit into the picture where did he come from and like i still don't know i don't know i thought i think i mixed it mixed it up with hen who was in the original group i'm like there's just too many people that are too inconsequential but keep kind of coming up that it's kind of annoying like there's too many to be relevant to for them for for you as a reader to like i don't know even recognize all of them and since I don't really do much except be there and love Mira like is it was that really necessary I feel like the author just had like a list of names that she wanted to use really badly when writing this book so she just tried to force them all into the story even though that didn't really serve any purpose and that also didn't work out well so sorry there's a lot of these instances of the main character just sort of guessing the right answer for a problem or like the store like the characters realizing things way too quickly just so it's not as hard for the author to like also kind of get the reader there if that makes sense like there would be some story developments that were very very like non-conclusive 
but because the main character just sort of guesses right a lot, that's like how the reader gets the same information. Like at some point she just has these random realiza realizations about it, like, oh, that means that. I'm like, why do you come to that conclusion? There's no basis for that. He's just like, oh, that's definitely true. And then obviously it is true because it's what the author wanted to happen, but she didn't really provide really enough information for the main characters to get there so she just like forced him to understand it i'm not sure if i'm so i think i'm still not com explaining this correctly but that part is just such lazy storytelling and we had just all like too much way too much of that in this book like it happened so much especially towards the end where it felt like let me just like i need to finish this up somehow but i started way too much work for myself and now i don't know what to do with it like, i sent them on a quest to literally look for a needle in a haystack so now because i don't want to make this book like 500 pages uh 10,000 pages i need them to find the stuff like immediately the first place literally they find the keys the first place wherever they go for example, I'm like, oh my god, I just know, but you can't do that. This is the most uncoordinated rant I've ever done. People who have not read this book, first of all, why are you here? But um, I'm sorry that this is completely all over the place. Even if you've read this book, <laughs> I'm sorry if I'm confusing. I'm probably confusing. But my thoughts are confusing to me too, so excuses. I think there's nothing about this book I liked. I'm so sorry. I'm sorry if you did like it. Um, Maybe Mather, maybe I like Mather and the Children of the Thaw. Even though I'm confused why they had the symbol before they even made up the name, like, what, where did the symbol come from? Like, they just found it. The, like, what is it? Like a snowflake, no, yeah, a snowflake melting. But then also, isn't that name kind of like in favor of spring? like spring melting winter so winter goes down but the opposite is like should we call like children of the freeze or something where winter regains their power right that's what they like want to em embrace i don't know there are so many inconsistencies with this book Whew, i am dead i have just completely ranted my life away i guess but yeah here were some very discombobulated thoughts that i had about this book let me know you guys if you've read it and uh, I really hope that you thought it was better because I just had the worst time getting through it. So bad, dude, <laughs> so bad. Anyway, let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe and I'm gonna see you soon. Have a lovely week, bye. I want to burn this book, I really do.